So the one card we're worried about here potentially is a Cinderclasm. Don't think I can really beat that card if they have it. So I'm gonna pretend like they don't. And then next turn, play a huge adversary. Oh boy. Alright, on to the next one. Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at Green White Humans, updated with Crimson Vow, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And some of the new cards introduced in Crimson Vow include Torrens, Fist of the Angels. The 3 mana 2 2 legendary human cleric has the training mechanic, meaning whenever this creature attacks with another creature with greater power, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. And whenever we cast a creature spell, we get to create a 1 1 green and white human soldier creature token with training, so that can get out of hand very quickly indeed. Then another new inclusion at 2 mana is Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, the 2 1 legendary human soldier with first strike, making non creature spells cost 1 generic mana more to cast. And you'll have noticed there's no non creature spells in this deck, so it's only going to affect the opponent. Could potentially play a third copy since it is quite powerful in certain matchups, but I wanted to make room for a few other cards. And then at 1 mana we have another training creature with Hopeful Initiate, a 1 mana 1-2 one with training, and for 2 and a white we can remove 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters from among creatures we control to destroy target artifact or enchantment. So pretty powerful 1-drop. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, not too many changes compared to the last time we covered green-white humans. Went up to 4 copies of Brutal Cathar as the main removal spell in the deck. A 2-2 creature that when it enters, exiles target creature and opponent controls until this creature leaves the battlefield. And then it introduces the day and night cycle, and when it transforms back into Brutal Cathar, it can exile another creature once again. And then to help protect Brutal Cathar, we also added one copy of Sarith the Viper's Fang, a 3-4 legendary human warlock, saying other untapped creatures you control have Hexproof, and other tapped creatures you control have Death Touch. So giving Death Touch to our tapped creatures works really well if we're going wide with a bunch of tokens from Torrens, and it also plays well with the First Strike from Thalia, as First Strike and Death Touch is pretty difficult for the opponent to block. Then at the top end of our deck we still have two copies of Sigarda, Champion of Light, a 4-4 legendary angel, the only non-human in the deck, has flying and trample and humans we control get plus one plus one, also has a coven ability saying whenever Sigarda attacks, if we control three or more creatures with different powers, we get to look at the top five cards of our library, reveal a human creature card from among them and put it into our hand. Then another source of card advantage now comes from two copies of a Realmwalker, a 2-3 shapeshifter with changeling, so it has every creature type including human, and as it enters a battlefield we choose a creature type, which is typically going to be human. We can look at the top card of our library at any time, and cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of our library. And the two copies of Realmwalker complement our two copies of Augur of Autumn nicely, which lets us take a look at the top card of our library at any time, and we can play lands from the top of our library as well. And then Augur of Autumn can turn into sort of a Realmwalker if we enable Coven, so that's not always a guarantee, which is why we're going with two copies of Realmwalker as well. Also the double green on Augur can sometimes be a little bit tricky to cast, since the deck is primarily white, but still want a mix of both, since it's better to have one of each in play as opposed to two of the same. And then as long as we control three or more creatures with different powers, we can still cast creature spells off the top of our library. So the Augur can eventually become a better Realm Walker, but just takes a little bit more effort to set up. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck at one mana, still have the full playset of Lunark Veteran as a 1-1 human, saying whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, we get to gain one life. So this is just a nice passive source of life gain that can stem the bleeding against the more aggressive decks, but still gives us a 1-drop, which is very important when playing with Catilda, Dawnheart, Prime, the 2-mana 1-1 legendary human warlock. So despite being legendary, still want to have all four copies, since it's such an important card once it gets going. 
has protection from werewolves, and says human creatures we control can tap to add one mana of any of this creature's colors, so all of a sudden all our creatures turn into mana creatures, which also plays very nicely with all these Augur of Autumn and Realmwalker effects, which then let us play creatures off the top of our deck. And then for 6 mana we can tap Catilda to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control. So nice mana sync also plays well with cards like Hopeful Initiate. And then that also explains why having these 1 drops is so important, so that we have additional creatures in play to leverage the extra mana from Catilda. Then our two copies of Thalia. You may have noticed I cut all the copies of Join the Dance, just because now we have access to Realmwalker, which also wants us to play more creatures, and Thalia is a bit of a nombo with Join the Dance as well, making it more expensive. So those are the reasons why it got cut, even though it had good synergy with Catilda, giving you two human tokens. Then of course we've got a full playset of Luminarch Aspirant as one of the most powerful two drops in standard, a 1-1 human saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, so an excellent way to enable Coven, and also plays quite nicely with the hopeful initiate. And then we've got a full playset of Intrepid Adversary, a 3-1 human with a lifelink, and when it enters a battlefield we can pay 1 and a white any number of times, and then the adversary will come into play with that many Valor counters on it, and creatures we control get plus 1 plus 1 for each Valor counter on Intrepid Adversary, so an awesome mana sink, especially alongside Catilda making additional mana. And then at 3 mana, besides Torrents, Augur, Realmwalker, and Brutal Cathar, we also have two copies of Adelin, a Resplendent Cathar. The legendary Human Knight has Vigilance, 4 Toughness, and Power equal to the number of creatures we control, so it's typically going to have quite a bit of power, which is good at enabling Coven as well, and can also enable training quite nicely. And then whenever we attack, we get to create a 1-1 white human creature token that's tapped and attacking the opponent or a planeswalker they control. So we can generate that 1-1 token on the very same turn we play Adelin, because it's not Adelin that has to be attacking to enable it. And then all those tokens will also play well with Catilda. The tokens we generate from Torrents will also be able to boost up Adelin, so there's a lot of synergy there. Some other 3 drops that didn't make the final cut but are certainly worthy candidates include Elite Spellbinder as a great tool against control decks especially, making their 7 drops more expensive. And then we could also be playing with Hamlet Vanguard, a new 3 drop that can potentially be a 5-5 if played on curve, if we can curve 1 drop, 2 drop and then play Hamlet Vanguard. So it can especially be nice against opposing green decks as a way to block their early aggression. And then taking a look at our mana base, 9 basic planes, 7 basic forests, and then our dual lands with a pathway and overgrown farmland. No real need for creature lands since we have quite a few mana sinks built into the deck. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, this hand's pretty awkward, no 1 or 2 drops, no green mana, that's gonna be a mulligan. Alright, this is a little bit better. Still can't quite play the initiate on curve, so I might just get rid of it then. And keep our more powerful 2 drops. Up against mono white aggro. So not the best matchup for Thalia, but probably still worth playing here as a good blocker for Usher. The few non-creature spells in Mono White might include like a Mall of the Skyclaves. So opponent's playing a version with a lot of 1-drops. Okay, so I think I want to wait on Adversary, which means for now... We're just playing an initiate. Not the best. Opponent's third land coming into play tapped, so we don't need to worry about Elite Spellbinder. Just a Clarion Spirit. Another initiate. Not really what we wanted. So I could attack to train the initiates. Thanks to Thalia, and then if I play Serith first, would also give both of them Death Touch. So then our opponent would lose at least two creatures if they try and block the Initiate, and Thalia is going to be very difficult for them to block profitably. That worked. Now we could get punished by like a Brutal Cathar exiling Serith or a Skyclave Apparition. So now we're taking quite a beating on the way back, but now maybe the adversary is more likely to survive. Oh, 
Augur of Autumn. We're pretty far from having Coven enabled, so for now I still prefer Anversary pump the team. And then... Do I want to attack with both? Or do I just send the Initiate? Keeping Thalia as a good blocker. It's probably best here. Because we have Augur to play the late game, so we shouldn't be trying to be too aggressive. So next turn I can play Augur, see if there's a land on top. All right, they also had the Brutal Cathar. Deals with Adversary. And now their Initiate could still attack. Now the good news is we already went through two removal spells. So now the Augur can maybe stick around. Some very aggressive attacks. I'll happily take out the Clarion Spirit here, I think. So Augur before playing the planes. Ooh, and a Luminarch Aspirin, but we're missing Coven here. So next turn we'll be able to play the Aspirant. Given that I have another play coming up, I'm okay playing the Initiate, otherwise I might want to keep it so we prevent the Brutal Cathar from transforming back, but this seems okay, and then we'll pass it back. I'm happy if we can just leverage the Augur. Opponent's got a few creature lands, including a flying Cave of the Frost Dragon, which could be problematic. Adlin can also force some trades. Alright, so Luminarch Aspirants could put counter on, let's see, probably one of the two powered creatures. And then Thalia makes a decent bit of sense here. And then we'll have Coven enabled for next turn. Could technically also use the Initiate at instant speed here. Should our opponent play a all of the Skyclaves. But Adlin might force the issue here. So I'm probably going to be forced to chump Adlin here with the Initiate. And then we can set up some other profitable blocks. Yeah, this seems fine. Take three. And then next turn we can grow Thalia to be able to block Adlin profitably. Another Usher. Opponent did not boast with the initial Usher, which is a little surprising. As we find another Aspirant on top. Ooh, nice and a Entrapped Adversary to boot. So that's a great find. Seeing the power of Augur of Autumn here. Now do I still want to grow Thalia? Maybe one counter is still fine. And then the other counter could go on maybe the Hopeful Initiate. Or I might want to spread out the large creatures a little bit. Could also put counter on Adversary itself as a big lifelink creature. But we'll stay back for now at 5 life. And then, yeah, the main threat remains that Cave of the Frost Dragon. So I'll need to find flying creatures or just start attacking with my lifelinker to swing the race. Opponent turns out Thalia. Adlin attacks. So maybe they have a backup Adlin here if they're willing to make this attack. So how do I block... Well, I get to gain 5 life for free, so then I don't feel too bad about taking 4 of the Hopeful Initiates. So, 
Don't feel the need to double block it. And yeah, they had a backup Adlin, which makes sense. Okay, are we just growing Intrepid Adversary at this point? So we can maybe beat that Cave of the Frost Dragon. Seems reasonable, although it's going to be a while before it's actually large enough to attack. Maybe I should still put a counter on like a Luminarch Aspirant. Just going to be mindful we don't remove Coven, but don't think that's going to be an issue. And then, yeah, I'll pass. Brutal Cathara transforms, but unlikely to transform back anytime soon. Alright, we've gone through a pocket of lands here, another land on top. Still not really in a position to attack, I don't think. Opponent's got 5 power of first strike too. So, where do I spread out my counters here? Maybe another one on Thalia, and another one on the Adversary. So have a good block on the initiative if it grows by one more. But kind of an uncomfortable situation since if they can transform back Brutal Cathar and exile one of my Adversary or Agrofotum, we could be in trouble. And yep, opponent was sandbagging their creature to transform back Brutal Cathar, which is undoubtedly gonna get rid of the Augur here, I think. Goes for Intrepid Adversary. Also makes sense, but... Ooh, that's a juicy top deck. And our opponent scoops it up. Brutal Cathar can exile Brutal Cathar, and then... It's going to be very difficult for the opponent to recover. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Catilda could maybe ramp into turn 3 Sigarda. And then we've got the Aspirant as a good way to enable Coven. Ooh. Something I didn't mention in the introduction is a synergy between Catilda and Sarith. Because we can sort of tap our creatures at instant speed to potentially give them Death Touch, which could catch the opponent off guard. But for now I'm liking Sigarda, and then next turn I might be able to enable Coven to find an extra human. Opponent on blue-white, some sort of control deck. Goes for a Sunset Revelry. Alrighty, so what's the play here? If I play Sarith, it's going to have 4 power because of Sigarda, so then I wouldn't have Coven. Aspirant, on the other hand, would enable it if I put the counter on one of my smaller creatures. So I guess that's fine. Aspirant put counter on Catilda. And then maybe attack with Catilda. And see what we get. Alright, I'm liking the Realmwalker quite a bit against Control. But Augur of Autumn was also close. Opponent's jumping. Don't really feel the need to add more to the board here. So I'm gonna keep the Adversary in case we see Doomscar in the next couple turns. Now that we drew a second adversary, it might be okay to play another one here. Alright, fine. And then I'll just bump it once. And then I have to be a little bit careful with where we put the counter, so I cannot put it on the Aspirants. And then I guess the counter goes on Sigarda. And then we still have Coven. And then I'm okay trading Aspirant with three tokens. Since they're probably gonna set up a Doomscar here anyway. So we might just see them chump chump. And then I'll take another Adversary over Brutal Cathar since I don't expect to need the removal. 
Yeah, opponents got a Fading Hope to shrink down my creatures. So that sort of implies they don't have a Sweeper coming up. And they're just gonna try and take out the Aspirant or Catilda. And a Chump. That's fine. Five mana. So now that I'm less concerned about a sweeper, I'll start playing slightly differently. Of course, if they had a Dooms card, there's a good chance they would have foretold it already. Alright, so what's next? I want to enable Coven. So I could play an Adversary, pay the two extra mana, and that would sort of work. Or I could play a Sarith first, and then see what they want to do about it. And then I can still play an Adversary without paying the extra mana, just to get Coven, should they counter Sarith. Opponents looking at their graveyard for a devious cover-up. Fair enough. I want to keep Realmocker in hand as kind of a way to recover from a sweeper. So that's probably the last creature I want to play out. But Sigarda's doing an excellent job providing extra creatures here. Opponent's down to seven, so they'll need a reset button. It's going to be a main phase Faithful Mending but no mana to cast a Doomscar afterwards. And an inspired idea. That's not gonna cut it, so... They could still have a Fading Hope, technically, to bounce the Garda, so that's a good reason to still play the Adversary to pump the other creatures up. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand is missing green mana. That being said, I still have some castable two drops. We're on the draw. So there's a decent chance we'll find green mana by the time we need it. Up against a snow control deck. Or maybe a zombies deck with Jodar. Would much prefer a zombies deck over snow control because. Cards like Blood on the Snow, Meat Hook Massacre is not what we want to face with our humans. So for now, Thalia seems fine. A good blocker, even though it could die to the minus one, minus one from Shambling Ghast. Which Felstinger can uh, take care of. Possible going for Aspirant, put a counter on it, would have been a little bit safer. Now I'm sort of liking uh, Torrents here. And then next turn we can potentially make a bunch of tokens. Although we're gonna take a little bit of damage. Would like to get Catilda going, so I can empty my hand faster. And then I can still play another 2-drop thanks to Torrents tapping for mana. And I think Aspirin's the pick. And then I'll put a counter on the 1-1 one -one token. One has got an even death end of turn. Can deal quite a bit of damage, and we don't have removal in hand, but we do have a Sigarda, which can maybe block it. Especially if I can put two counters on it with Aspirant. Although you have to imagine Mono Black's gonna have some removal to deal with Sigarda. Tainted Adversary to go wide. 
but at least they didn't get a token from Jadar this turn. Okay, so what are the options here? Have to play Sigarda, pretty much. And then, yeah, I guess Aspirants. And then I want to put two counters on it, if possible. And then I'm gonna leave Torrens as a blocker for a 2-2 zombie. And hope Sigarda can hold the fort. There's also Faceless Haven to worry about. Don't think I'm quite dead to an all-out attack. Happy to chum block the adversary with a token. Right, even death is attacking. So maybe they have a way to finish off Sigarda after I block, but don't really have a choice here in the matter. Could have potentially chum blocked one of the decayed zombies earlier to save myself two damage. So I could have been at one after taking five from even death. But of course those tokens would have been quite helpful with making additional mana with Catilda as well. Oof, a meat hook massacre. That should be game over here. End up at one life. Probably not gonna be enough here. Alright, it's gonna be pretty difficult to recover from here. But I guess a Lunar Veteran can start gaining a little bit of life. Um, there's Adversary and a Faceless Haven to worry about. So maybe go Lunar Veteran into Adversary, which can trade for Haven, so I don't die to the Meat Hook Massacre. And then the Veteran could jump Adversary. And Felstinger can finish us off with uh, two damage. Bonan decides to draw themselves instead. Finish off the adversary. And then... I'm sure opponent can still find the win here. Eaten alive will do it. But Felstinger could have also targeted us to deal the last two points. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Got our creature removal, two powerful two drops to choose from. And then a Sigarda to maybe go over the top. Facing green-white, so it could be some sort of mirror match or maybe a ramp deck. But can't go wrong with turn two aspirants. Right, looks like maybe a more green focused build. Brutal Cathar, decent answer to the pack leader. Also quite mana efficient, so sure, let's go for it. And get in for three. Opponent could have their own Brutal Cathar here. It looks like a Naya build, so maybe more of a werewolf stack after all. Uh, Stormseeker stays on defense. And can only play one spell here. Thalia could maybe delay Arlen next turn at 4 mana. I can put counter on Brutal Cathar so I can attack with both. Yeah, I don't mind Thalia here, even though Aspirant number 2. Would also be decent. So your opponent's at eight. And they've got their own brutal cathar. 
that happens. They could give the pack leader haste and attack with both, also enabling the pack tactics, but that would leave them pretty vulnerable on the way back. So our opponent decides against it. Torrens is a decent pickup. Probably fine to play here and then hope to draw another plane so we can start double spelling. And then a counter on Thalia seems best. Gives us a good block on the various three toughness creatures, but I'll stay back for now. So both decks seem to be stranded on three mana. Casting Naturalist to play. And our opponent's eager to enable pack tactics. And they do have two mana, so they could technically have a Snakeskin Veil and have the mana to pay for Thalia's tax, thanks to the mana from Naturalist. So I don't think we block Pack Leader and instead block the Naturalist so we don't get blown out by Snakeskin Veil. Otherwise, it doesn't seem likely for them to make that attack. Now they could play another 2-drop, second main of course. And the our opponent's just going to put the Snakeskin Veil on Stormseeker before the floating mana goes away. So glad we played around it. Found our fourth line, so we can start double spelling if we want. Or we can play Sigarda, which also seems pretty great here. And then I'm happy putting another counter on Thalia, perhaps. Could also attack with Thalia and Torrens. And maybe even the Aspirant for that matter. A lot of good options. And this seems fine. Wanted to make use of the training ability, so better to put counter on Thalia than on Torrens itself. And our opponent packs it in, just too much damage coming their way. Alright, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Could use land number three, but once we do, we've got some nice sources of card advantage. Up against Snow-Covered Mountain, so probably some sort of Izzet deck. Turn one initiates, nice. Opponents seem to have a spell there, maybe a spike field hazard. Yep. Alright, now maybe the aspirant gets to live. Smoldering egg. We currently don't have a great answer for. But Thalia is going to be great in the matchup. And then... Where to put the plus one counter? Putting it on Thalia protects it from future copies of Spikefield Hazard. And then... It would also let me put a second counter on Thalia to train the initiate next turn, so that seems fine. And we'll get in one damage. So really hoping for a land here, since we had a promising start with Thalia. A 3 mana iteration. So they wouldn't be able to cast any 1 mana spells now. So they're just looking for a land. In which they found. Alright, land has been found. And then... Probably going to play Augur of Autumn, so we can also play Lands of the Top. And then we'll stick to the plan of putting counter on Thalia to grow the initiates. Right, there's another land incoming. Sarath can give our creatures death touch, so the egg wouldn't be able to block them as easily. But it's still a delicate situation. Next turn we could see uh, burn down the house. Wipe our entire board. 
In fact, a Dragon's Fire cleans up Thalia. So Smoldering Egg close to transforming, and once it does, it can start taking out our creatures one by one. So the Hexproof from Sarith also going to be important. Difficult to pass up on a free Adlin off the top. And then probably fine to play before playing the land in case there's a land following Adlin, even though that doesn't play around Jory Disruption. And there's a land next. Alright, Aspirant triggers. And then probably want to pump the Hopeful initiate. Now we have to be careful because our opponent could have an instant to transform the egg. So it's not safe to attack with the other creatures here. So I'll just pump the initiate and only attack with the initiate. Which will still make a token with Adlin. Which is potentially going to get ambushed by the egg. And then maybe next turn's a good window for Sarith. Ooh, Cinderclasm. Okay. Don't think our opponent's gonna trade here, so they fall to 8. But they get to untap with an Ashmouth Dragon. No cards in exile, so they can't cast an Elrond's Epiphany just yet. But can't feel too comfortable here. Goldspan Dragon to play. And our opponent stays back. Ooh, Brutal Cathar off the top. That's a huge one. So that can exile the Ashmouth Dragon, potentially. Don't have the mana to play Sereth first for protection. So we'll see if they have one mana interaction. They don't. Alright, so now we're in the driver's seat. Move to combats, and then... Can attack with everyone, since they're forced to block a four-powered creature. Sadly, don't quite get to five power to enable training here in time, but bonus force to trade. And then, should I play an adversary? One way the opponent can recover is with uh, sweepers. I don't think there's a real reason to play adversary. Maybe there's a sequence where they deal with Brutal Cathar, have another interactive spell and can somehow survive, but that's probably a game we can still win. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand, I suppose. Not particularly exciting, but if we draw Forest, we can get Augur going, and we can cast some spells in the meantime, even if Adversary isn't the best play on turn 2. Up against Mono White. And they must have just picked up Usher of the Fallen. Not too sad about Portable Hole. Ooh, Torrents could be great if that survives. And Brutal Cathar exiles Adversary. Not too broken up about that one. Alright, so we'll play Torrens if they have another Brutal Cathar. I'll free Torrens as opposed to the Adversary. Alright, opponent's got their own Adversary. So we're taking quite a bit of damage, but hopefully Torrens can eventually uh, provide a board presence to help us out. Catilda would have been a great draw too here. Instead I could play an adversary and pay the two extra mana. Seems fine. And then maybe wait on our own Brutal Cathar until I have five mana so I can free the adversary and pay the two at the same time. Now, removal on Adversary would be painful. Another Adversary, okay. Damage is starting to add up. Although this could still work, we can trade Adversaries 
and then the usher with two damage marked on it is going to shrink down and eventually die as well. So I think that's a fine trade. All right, initiates, cheap play we can make a token with. And then might have to settle with Brutal Cathar without paying the extra mana for Adversary. Or I can just exile their Adversary, but that's pretty risky if they have another Brutal Cathar. Alternatively, you can just play another Adversary and pay the two. That's also not bad, because then I'll have a 2-2 token to block their Adversary. There's Faceless Haven to worry about. All right, so all adversary all the time. We got three each. So do they want to attack? They do. So we'll trade adversaries and then take the five. And now that we drew another Brutal Cathar, I can certainly afford to play one out. And then Torrents can attack to train the token. A long way to go with her opponent at 27 still. And they do have double Faceless Haven. Ooh, Skyclave. Alright, so they can free their adversary, pay the two mana again. As soon as we find a second green source, Augur can take over the game, and Katilda is an amazing draw, especially with our tokens being green and white, so they can let me cast Augur of Autumn. So now we're really going to see the deck pop off. Play a land, and then do I want a Brutal Cathar anything? I think I'll wait until next turn, then I'll be able to... Exile the Brutal Cathar, get my adversary back, and pump the team by quite a bit. And then our opponent concedes. Yeah, just too much value engines here between Augur, Katilda, and Torrens. Alright, sweet. So, yeah, we got to see Torrens combo off a few times, especially in these creature matchups like Mono White or like a Werewolf stack we played against. Those are the matchups where Torrens will shine, as there's not too much removal to worry about, and no sweepers to clean up all the 1 1 tokens. But on the other hand, there's a lot of decks packing additional sweepers, especially sweepers like Cinder Classum and the Meat Hook Massacre, which are particularly effective against low toughness creatures from the Mono White deck, which of course we have a lot of overlap with, without necessarily having the benefit of a creature land like Faceless Haven. So I don't think the deck is particularly well positioned at the moment, since there's just too much hate for the Mono White deck, which is the most played and probably most popular deck in Best of One Standard at the moment. So I would avoid the Green White Humans deck for now, but there might be a time where it's gonna be a fine deck in the meta if these uh, sweeper effects go down in numbers, and a card like Torrents could potentially break these creature board stalls. Could of course try and improve your control matchups by playing more cards like Elite Spellbinder, maybe play the new 3 mana creature that can turn into a 5-5 five -five on curve, but uh, still those cards also have some of their own downsides. The Spellbinder still dies to those sweepers of course, even if we make a Meat Hook Massacre too more expensive, the opponent can usually still cast it and have it be effective. So it's not a perfect solution necessarily, so probably better to just play another deck for the time being and uh, try and circumvent some of those hate cards. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.